Here is your cannabis compliance update. The state changes to watch and be aware of. Hey, I'm Morgan Davis. I'm a business attorney based in Raleigh, North Carolina. I focus on cannabis and wellness. Let's talk about how to keep your business protected and thriving. One of the biggest hurdles for any cannabis company operating in the federally legal cannabis space or intoxicating hemp space these days is keeping up with the constantly changing regulations on a state by state basis. So in order to help you out, I am going to do monthly updates on the biggest changes in certain states around the country that affect your business. We don't cover every state. It's not all 50. That would take forever. We hit the highlights from the last month for you to be aware of so that you know where you can sell your product and where you can't. So let's get started. Here are the biggest updates from March and April 2024. California AB 2223. We started talking about this in January and February. It's a a bill proposed in California that is going through the General Assembly. Didn't have a lot of movement until the past couple of weeks. And originally when it was proposed, it was very similar to lots of other bills that are sweeping the country, targeting synthetic cannabinoids. So we're moving away from last year, we saw a lot of legislation that was specifically banning Delta-8, specifically banning Delta-10, HHC, THCO, et cetera. Now that legislation is being expanded and the definition of synthetic cannabinoid is, is starting to wrap in the isomerization trend. So a lot of products that are in the intoxicating hemp industry are made by isomerizing CBD or some other cannabinoid, but generally it's CBD, and then through a chemical catalyst, turning that into a commercially available large amount of some other cannabinoid like Delta-8. That process has been deemed synthetic. And we can get into the conversation on another day about whether or not it is. In fact, we've talked about it before, and there are lots of people out there with different opinions. Then none of that really matters for this point. The point is there are lots of legislators and lawyers and other people who have policy decisions that believe that that process is synthetic. So they are expanding the definition of synthetic to try and wrap that in. That's originally how California's AB 2223 started out. However, now it has been significantly amended and expanded to add extremely low milligram caps. And if it passes in its current form, it will essentially cut, it will turn California off for almost all of the hemp industry. That's a big blow. California is a huge state with a massive consumption of all cannabis categories. And while inhalable products or smokable products are pretty much banned in California, um, edibles, beverages, all topicals, other wellness related products, both intoxicating and non-intoxicating are very popular in California and have continued to be. It's one of the first states to, to embrace cannabis. And that's true of hemp too. Um, And so if California is turned off for the hemp industry, some might see that as a massive win for the regulated cannabis industry, but it will be a big blow to the hemp industry. Louisiana, uh, Louisiana HB 952, and then several uh, companion bills. Louisiana has always been, you know, kind of a weird, fun state unto itself when it comes to hemp. They regulated it from the get-go. They've always had a milligram, or almost always had a milligram cap of eight milligrams of THC per container. Um, The new pending bills and several companion bills that come with it add additional regulations for those wishing to produce or sell products in Louisiana. Um, The biggest change is that it's the bill specifically calls out no products may contain anything other than naturally derived cannabinoids. The term naturally derived is not defined in this bill, so we'll have to wait and see if it does ultimately get defined and what it's defined as, or if they will leave it up to the Louisiana State Agency, the Department of Health and Human Services, or the equivalent to decide what that means. But it should put everybody on alert that, um, depending on how that definition comes out, 
could have a significant effect on what products are able to be sold in Louisiana moving forward. Illinois SB 3926. This is another big one. Similar to California, Illinois' SB 3926 seeks to turn off the hemp industry for Illinois outside of the regulated market. What that means is they this bill, if it passes in its current form, would set milligram caps for um, concentrations at extremely low points. So 0.5 milligrams per serving THC, total THC, or two milligrams per package. That's super low. They must contain a, an amount of total hemp cannabinoid concentration that is at least 25 times greater than the amount of total THC concentration per serving and per package. That means it's gonna be, in addition to a low milligram cap, you're gonna to have to have a high ratio of other cannabinoids to dampen the THC effect. Cannot contain synthetic cannabinoids. This one specifically calls out artificially derived cannabinoids or cannabinoids created through isomerization or including THC created through isomerization. So this is what we were talking about. We're combining a low milligram cap with a ban on synthetics. It's gonna make what's available to be sold outside of the regulated market in Illinois very, very limited. Now, unlike California, which currently does not offer a provision to pull, if passed, pull the hemp market into the regulated market, this specifically calls out from the get-go that these products would be able to be sold through the regulated market. However, that means a hemp company looking to sell its intoxicating products in Illinois would have to act like every other cannabis business. They'd have to go through the same licensing, the same testing procedures, same, same packaging and labeling and advertising standards. Um, it's a lot more expensive. There are a lot more rules and regulations and the way it's currently written, you only get to sell those products in Illinois, right? So if you're trying to have a national brand, this may essentially just turn Illinois dark for you. Utah, HB 52, um, has passed. It adopts the following. Total THC limitation for all hemp products. If you're needing a refresher on what total THC is, go see our video on that. Um, five milligrams per serving, 150 milligrams per container cap. Requires licensing for all sellers as well as pre-market approval. That does not go into effect until January 2025. And all cannabinoids must be naturally occurring. That definition, very much similar to the one in Illinois, specifically targets products th created through isomerization. Finally, Nebraska LB388. We talked about that back in February and March. Um, it's dead on arrival. It's not gonna pass. It was the crazy one that where Nebraska legislatures proposed a bill that would set a hundred percent excise tax on hemp products. Then they negotiated down to 25%. It now is going to fail to pass altogether. So as the legislative legislative session in Nebraska ends, looks like that law will stay the same through the next legislative session, unless they start an emergency or special session. I hope this update was helpful. Come back next month for more. However, if you are finding that you need more than our monthly snippets and our monthly highlights, we now offer a 50 state review for clients who are looking for a monthly 50 state review that is specific to your product category and or your product type. If you're feeling like this is something you need for your national brand, give us a call today.